God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining this service today. I want to let you know that the Lord has a better plan for us in this season. No matter the situation or challenges we are going to currently. Before we go into the word of God properly, I want to, talk to just do a word of prayer this morning. And then I want us to do it with our spiritual and body together. Let's be here. And I know that the Lord Himself will do something great and mighty in our midst in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, King of Glory, we thank you this morning. Glory and honor to your name. Thank you, Lord, for this season. Thank you because we know that you have a better plan for our life. Thank you for the things you are doing. Thank you because you are an awesome God. Father, may we praise forever in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning I ask the Lord, you will open our eyes, O oh Lord, to see one roasting out of your law in the name of Jesus. You will open our eyes to see the promises you have for us in a time like this, so that every fear, every fear in our heart will vanish away, and the faith that will keep us up through this season will be ignited in our heart. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. We give you glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Divinity Life Gospel Church. This is our online service. You know, we have to comply with the government regulatory body for this season. For um in order to comply to to just close church and then we can also use this opportunity to um, let the people know 
that church is not the forewall of a building church is about we and uh, this season we are using this medium to say satan cannot close church he cannot because uh, the lord himself has made everything work together for our good thank god for technology you know everybody can be in the comfort of their homes and then listen to sermons and messages live in different parts of the world so thank you for coming online this morning and i know the lord himself will bless you in the name of jesus all right very quickly we will be looking at covenant of exemption covenant of exemption we'll be taking our bearing from uh, isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 and 2 Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 and 2. I read KJV version said, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the head, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the head, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. The word of God makes us to understand in this vast past passage we read that darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you on high, and his glory shall be seen in our lives. What does this mean? This is a covenant of exemption from the plague of darkness that is glooming over the head. Every man, every country, every nation, every nations, every state, every continent are going through breakdown right now. They are going through lockdown. A lot of things are happening that people are living in panicking. People are beginning to fret. They don't know what tomorrow holds because of the current situation we find ourselves. But then, from the word of God, we have promises of God that has told us or that has prepared us to let us know that there will be, there, there will be issues that will come up sometime this time. And in that period, we should not panic, we should not fret. All we should do is to hold God tight so that the light of God, so that the glory of God will be seen in our life. Darkness we cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall what? arise upon us and his glory shall be seen upon us. What does that connote? That means in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of of darkness the lord is going to be our light so when people are going through darkness during that period we will be expressing light we will be experiencing light because the promises of god are ye and amen are ye and amen so it doesn't it doesn't matter how serious this coronavirus pandemic is you and I are covered why because the lord has said so and i also like you to know that this is not the first time that issues like this will come up there are a lot of viruses a lot of diseases even from the days of the bible a lot of problems a lot of tri trials a lot of issues had come up that 
God saved his own people. God saved his own people during this period. Let me give an example of what happened in Egypt. When God told the of Israel to go in slavery and God told them that I've come to deliver them and God sent Moses to go and deliver them. So Moses went as a deliverer by the authority of the Lord Almighty. So he went there. When he was there, Moses began to negotiate with Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, no, I won't allow you to go. And God visited the land with diverse plagues. Diverse plagues. Diverse diseases. But what happened is, why the Egyptians were experiencing these trials, these problems, the children of Israel were exempted. They, were, they, they weren't experiencing what the Egyptians were experiencing. Why? Because the covenant of protection life. The covenant of God was sure on their lives. So they stand still believing and having faith in God's covenant of protection over their lives. They weren't panicking. They were at peace. And they believed God. They trusted Him. So that enabled them to stay alive, to stay calm in the midst of the challenge. Do you know that most of the time Fear kills people than the sickness or the challenge itself. The fear of a thing kills kill people very fast or faster than the challenge or the sickness itself. I learned that some people took chloroquine over those and they killed themselves because of the fear of coronavirus. Some people were began to, they began to do diverse kind of thing in order to protect themselves from coronavirus, and these things are the things they do to the detriment of their own health, of their life. God, they that the fear of that sickness already is killing them, even when the sickness has never come to them. So that is why. We need to look into the Word of God to look out for secrets of God in order for us to be able to stand in this time of our life. All right, now let's see this in Exodus. God told them that He will send. Agent of destruction, angel of destruction into Egypt. He also told them, stay in your houses. But they didn't just stay in their houses, they were doing something. It's not about staying at home, it's not about isolation, it's not about self isolation, rather. But it's about what you are doing during the isolation. God didn't just command them to go through isolation. He told them to do something beyond that. In Exodus, we see how that God told them to engage the Passover. The Passover. Amen. The Passover was what they did. It entails the blood, entails killing of the lamb. After killing of the lamb, they have to bring out the blood. They sprinkled the blood on the lintel of their houses. They took the Passover, uh, Passover feast. And those are the two things they did that enabled them to be exempted from the destruction of the land. So the sprinkling of the blood on the lintel of the house, so when the plague, when the angel, 
angel of destruction comes to their houses once they see the blood they just pass over so they pass over because they saw something you shouldn't be afraid of the coronavirus because if you're afraid of it even if you don't have it you may eventually invite it because coronavirus is a spirit remember job job said what i fear most has happened to me what i fear most has happened to me so when you fear something you are simply inviting the spirit of that thing to come to you and there's another thing i also want you to know is that when you fear something it simply connotes that you have faith that that thing will come to you and that you do not have faith in God's protection for your life. I come again. When you fear something, what you fear simply means you have faith in it. So you have faith that that thing is strong enough to attack you. You have faith that that disease or that sickness or that virus will attack you. You have faith in that sickness that this sickness will come to you that is why you are afraid that's why you are you are scared that is why you are panicking that's why you are you you are you, you you are full of fret you don't need to fear coronavirus you don't need to be afraid of it you all need to do all you need to do is just to have faith in god and in his promise of protection against every diseases I also want you to know something that the Lord Himself is a good God. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, God always keep His own people. He always keep His own people. The problem we have is that people do not understand the love of God. You do not understand how much God loves you. So you begin to fret when you see a single attack of the enemy in your, your life you like, oh oh this has happened oh i don't know this is gonna be like this i'm i'm afraid i don't have capacity for this no that is not it that is not it you really really need to depend on the love and the goodness of god god is so good that he will attack you with what is bigger than you he will never do that in egypt the plague was real. The plague was so much that people were dying in Egypt. But the Israelites were saved. Why? They were saved because number one, they trusted God. Number two, they followed His commandment. They did everything God asked them to do. Their trust, their faith was in God. It wasn't on any other thing. But just on God. So they trusted Him. They had faith in Him. They know that this God we serve is able to deliver us. Look at the, the three Hebrew children. They were thrown into the fairy furnace. But before they were thrown, they said, See, we know that the God we serve is able to save us. Until you know that God is able to save you, you can never enjoy the safety of God. You must realize that God loves you. God is ready to save you regardless of this disease, of the problem you are in. No matter how serious it may appear, God has the power to deliver you from it all. Do not do depend on the challenge. Don't let the challenge look too real to you than the way God looks to you. The problem is that we are seeing our challenges, but we are not seeing God. We are not looking unto God. They look unto Him and they were lighting, and their faces were not ashamed. We are so, so much looking at our trouble, our struggles, our challenges than the way we are seeing God. And that is why fear sets in. Fear will always set in when we look at the challenge more than when we see the challenge more than the way we see God. When the challenge magnifies it or herself to us beyond the way God is to us, 
then fear will set in. But if you are able to look at God, to see that this our God is too big than the challenge you are going through, then there will be faith and there will be courage to stand strong in the face of trouble, in, in, in the face of trial, in the face of circumstances. We need to realize that in this period, God's love is still intact. God still loves you and high. God still wants you and high to believe Him, to trust Him, to depend on Him. And why we do that, He will make a way of escape for us. You shouldn't allow this pandemic to scare you off your feet. That begin to take things that will hurt your flesh, that will hurt your body. You don't need it. All you need is your faith and trust in God. Now, let me quickly discuss with us what are the things to do in time like this to enjoy divine exemption. Now, from the from the word of God. God has promised us in Isaiah 60, 60 verse 1 and 2, He said, Arise, shine, for the, light, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the head, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. That simply means that you have to make the Lord your God. You have to believe on Him. You have to trust Him. If you are not born again, you have to be born again. You have to give your life to Him. Because if you don't give your life to Him, there is no way that this God will help you. You need to trust Him. You need to believe Him. His love is open. His arms are wide open. Always ready to embrace you. He's always ready to come around you, to help you, to tell you, son, my son, my daughter, I'm here for you. I'm ready to be with you. I'm ready to stand with you in this time, in this season, where everything is shut down, where the old earth is filled with fear and gloominess, where everyone is not sure of what tomorrow holds for them. You need God. I need to let you know that you need God. You really need God this time. You need God this time. Number two is that from the from 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 the history of uh, the um, Israelite in Egypt, Bible says the Israelites were in Goshen. So they have a place. They have a location where they were kept. That place where they were kept they were exempted from the plague and from the destruction that was happening in the land during that period now let's do some analogy during the period where the agent of destruction the angel, angel of destruction were killing the egyptians if an israelite leave goshen and went into the city of Egypt, it would be destroyed with the Egyptians. It would be destroyed with the Egyptians because he has left the location where the covenant of God is sure. He has moved from that place of protection to a place where you will be what exposed to danger. So what I'm saying saying in nutshell is that you must stay where God asks you to stay. Stay in divine location. Stay where you are asked to stay. When you are in your place, nobody can take your place. When you are in God, Nobody can take you away from his protection. A lot of people have begun to do all sorts of things. Imagine I was in a store yesterday to get some things. 
and I learned that some people were buying alcohol. People we we are supposed to look up to like a pastor and all those things, and they said this elderly man, according to the owner of the store, he was telling him that the man was getting alcohol from there, and then I like alcohol. He said yes, the pastor he takes it to, and I was shocked because. It's not because of it's all because of the fear of coronavirus. You we don't have to dip our hands into things that are not godly because of coronavirus. No, it should depend solely on the promises of God for protection upon our lives. That is what we ought to do. That is what we ought to do. We shouldn't panic. You shouldn't be scared, you shouldn't be afraid of the plague. No matter how serious this plague may look, God is bigger and is able to deliver us from it. So, I said stay in your location. Number one, give your life to Christ, accept as the Lord and your personal Savior. Number two, I said stay in your place. Number three, engage in the blood or sprinkling. Engage in blood of speaking. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things. Better things. So if the plague is flying everywhere, fumigate your house with the blood of Jesus. Sprinkle your house with the blood of Jesus. And when you do that, when the disease, the, spirit, the angel of destruction visits every other place, they won't come to your place. Also, take the communion, the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ, take it on a daily basis. Let it be that you take it on a daily basis because you can't have the blood and the flesh of Jesus Christ on your life and one sickness will not attack you and kill you. No. One disease, coronavirus, cannot attack you where the spirit of the Lord is. That is not possible. I want you to realize that this period is a period of where you in all spiritual covenant practices. You take the blood of Jesus Christ and get in communion and get in it day and night. Pray. Pray and believe God. Pray and believe God. Trust Him. And let His trust, let His love be so real to you than the danger of coronavirus. When you can embrace the love of God, you will, you will be so confident in and be safety conscious that you will not be afraid of the coronavirus to the level where you will have to use your own hand to kill yourself by taking things that will hurt your body. Like I said, the fear of a thing kills faster than the thing itself. When you are scared of something, it kills you faster than the disease. That means if you are scared of this sickness, the fear of coronavirus kills a lot of people faster than coronavirus itself. You need to build your faith. You need to trust God. You need to believe Him and depend on His love. And when you do all these things, I'm telling you, no matter how much this thing will look you will feel safe and nothing will happen to you nothing will happen to you because the lord is god he has power over everything he has power over every challenges of life he has power over every situation of life i want you to depend solely on him Please do. As you do so, the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name. Now, are you there? You're not born again. This period, I need to tell you, you need to be born again. One sure way to be saved is to be saved. One sure way to be saved from this coronavirus is to be saved. If you are not saved, 
you are not saved. Jesus is the only Savior. He can save you and I. He's ready. His arms are open wide to embrace you. I know this will be difficult for you to believe. No matter how much this plague may be, if you are in God, He will protect you. If you are in God, He will be your guide. If you are in God, you are covered. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Say this word of prayer with me. If you want to give your life to Christ, say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross of Calvary. I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my Lord. But today, I reject Satan and his works. I believe you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross of Calvary for me. And on the third day, he rose again. And I believe that you are my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Write my name to the book of life from this day forward. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for you. Just be saying amen. Father, I thank you for these ones that have given their lives to you. I ask the Lord, your grace will find them. Let your grace preserve them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your grace keep them Amen. against this attack and every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. May your spirit flow into their heart, the spirit of boldness, the spirit of love and of sound mind Amen. flows into their spirit right now in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I will pray. I'd like to pray just one prayer and I will share the grace. I will go. And the prayer is this. I want to call the name of the Lord one time and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, protect me and my loved ones. Protect the generation from this COVID-19. Let every grip of COVID-19 be destroyed. Every stronghold, every demonic force, waging war against this world, waging war against our Else, against our joy, against our freedom, may the fire of Holy Ghost destroy them. Prayers in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Christ, Father, we pray. We ask, oh Lord, that Lord, you would destroy every old of COVID 19, every disease, every virus uh, that get dead at your people to destroy us, oh God, before our time. We destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we destroy, we destroy every stronghold of COVID-19, of coronavirus pandemic, waging war against the peace of the people, waging war against the nations, waging war against countries. This season, we destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. We destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord is strong to war. The righteous run into it and they are saved. I decree the safety of our nation, Nigeria. I decree the safety of our state, Lagos. I decree the safety of every country in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and declare. We are covered in the blood of Jesus. Uh, no demons uh, of sickness called COVID-19 will reach us. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I ask for the healing of those who have been infected. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, let there be massive healing in the camp uh, where those people are camped. In every association centers. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you are covered. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because we have been protected already. We are secured in you. In the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice are protected against COVID-19. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ boosts your immunity to fight every form of attack, every form of virus. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be a victim, but you will be a victor. So shall it be. Cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining in this morning. 
I want you to know that you and your family are protected against COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Hear me, you will come out strong in the name of Jesus Christ. The children of Israel came out from Egypt with wealth. They came out strong. You shall come out strong in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. It is well with your endeavors. It is well with your family. It is well with your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.